Well, I needed the money. Um, <laughs> I do want to correct one thing that Fred said. He was very gracious in his introduction, but I am not doing this commercially. I stopped doing anything commercially a number of years ago. Uh, I am a casual user of Windows 8. Uh, as, as you uh, often find out in life, if you're the first person to try something, you will automatically become the expert. And I was one of the first people in the group to try Windows 8 way back in January of 2013 when Microsoft had a deal going on where you could upgrade for $39.99. And I was perfectly happy with Windows 7, but I figured, hey, for $39.99, I'll play around with this and try it out. So I put it on my laptop, and I kind of liked it, and I said, this is interesting, and it was almost January 31st, so I bought another subscription, put it on my desktop. And my wife, in the meantime, is perfectly happy with Windows 7, so she's just trucking right along with Windows 7. Uh, and because I could answer a few questions and talk a little bit about Windows 8, I became the expert on Windows 8. So bear with me. I, hopefully what I can do if, is is not give you an answer off the top of my head to any questions you have. I may be able to do some of those, but I can probably point you in the right direction of where to get the answer because I've been kind of walking around through the Microsoft websites and some of the reference manuals and so forth. So between those things, I think we can get things solved or help you out. Uh, my intent today, as Fred said, was to, uh, uh, rather than me just stand up here and talk about what I want to talk about and some people listen and some people, you know, get bored and don't listen and so forth. I want to make it as uh, uh, effective for everybody here as possible. So I'm going to do an introduction, kind of bring me up to the present time in Windows 8.11, and then kind of throw it open to questions, comments, uh, things you found out about the system that you'd like to share, <coughs> problems you have, and uh, we can talk about where, if we have an answer, if not, where you might go to get an answer and so on. Okay. Uh, now, first of all, I want to refer back to the, the email that Fred talked about. Fred was kind enough to set up a Google Groups email process for the club probably a year ago or so. Yeah, it's been a while. And uh, I kind of get the sense that some people use them, some people pay attention to them, some people don't read them, and so forth. Did, does everybody here see the, those Google group emails that come around to members? Or a different way to put it. Does anyone who hasn't seen them? Okay. Uh, the members evidently haven't been added. Well, that's what I want to be sure. The heading on it, uh, it would be, uh, you know, a, a to from kind of thing on your email. The from line would say lcace-members at googlegroups.com. So uh, if you uh, if, if be alert, if you see something like that, it's not spam, it's an email sharing information from the club. If you don't remember seeing or getting one, uh, who should they pass along their email address to? Uh, JJ. JJ? JJ? JJ. Yeah. Uh, and you are at, what's your email address? Uh, me? What do you want them to send it to? Anything LCAC.org. I'm sorry? It's anything at LCAC.org, I get it all. Oh, okay. Information, so, information LCAC.org. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Or, or member, membership. Membership would work. Okay. Yep. Um, go to the LCAC.org website and there's a place to leave a message there, or it would just be membership at LCAC. Right. Yeah. Okay, send it to membership at lcace.org. Just say, hey, I don't think I've been getting these Google Groups emails. Uh, please make sure that, uh, here's my e current email address, please make sure that that's part of the group listing. Now, if you want to post anything to that, and anybody can. So if you have a question or a concern or you want to offer something, hey, I've got a printer I don't need, anybody wants it, get in touch with me. It's, it's, it's here for everybody to use. Uh, you, would, you would use that two line, which would be lcac-members at googlegroups.com. Okay. 
but you have to make sure that you are sending it from an email address that you have given to JJ and that they put in the group. I found that out the hard way because I had tried to send uh, an email to the group and I have several different email addresses. And my system by default was using an email address which was not the one that I gave to the club. And so I got this message back saying, uh, we are not a member of the group. And you couldn't do it. So well, that's, that's how it... Cutting down on spam. That's right. That's how, no, I, that's which is fine. But that's how it works. So uh, if you're not getting these, please follow through because that you will pass around information and so on. For example, after my first talk, I sent an email out to the group with a number of reference books about Windows 8.1 that I'd run across that I thought were good. If you didn't get that, that would be a shame. If you didn't get that, I'd be happy to resend the email. I'll do it anyway, just in case. Uh, so it, it is important that you're, you're kind of up on that, because otherwise you miss information. Okay? Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about Windows 8.1. By now, some of you are using it. How many are using Windows 8? Including 8.1. Yeah, 8 or 8.1. <coughs> so maybe a third, close to half. There's been a lot written about Windows 8, Windows 8.1. A lot of people don't like it. Some people do. Some people like certain aspects, don't like other aspects, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of chatter on the web and magazines and technical articles and so on. So I thought it'd be interesting to kind of go back in history. Let's go back about 10 years or so ago, 2005. If you wanted to do anything in a computing world, you did it on a laptop or a desktop, Apple or Microsoft, by and large. That was it. If you wanted to look something up, get information from the internet, if you wanted to download music, if you wanted to send an email to somebody, if you wanted to do some work, create a document, write the great American novel, uh, if you were doing work for work, uh, you did it on a desktop or a laptop. Okay. Uh, the term that I ran across that talked about this talked about content consumption and content creation. Content consumption being the things you do for fun, uh, sharing pictures with people, uh, getting information off the internet, downloading recipes, uh, you name it. Creation, of course, is when you're using an applications program to create a presentation, and you're doing a spreadsheet to figure out your finances, you're creating a letter, writing a letter to somebody, that's creation. Those were all done on desktops and laptops. Uh, some of you, maybe all of you, remember Vista. That was launched in this period of time on uh, January 30th, 2007. Okay? And, of course, Microsoft got beaten about the head and shoulders about Vista. People didn't like Vista, but that was just yet another Microsoft program uh, for desktops and laptop computers. Well, about six months later, the world changed. Can anybody tell me what happened on June 29th, 2007? Probably the day they introduced uh, the uh, iPad. No, it's close, though. Yes, sir. That's the date the iPhone was introduced. And all at once, people had a computer they could hold in their hand. And we went from there. Google scrambled to catch up in uh, October 22, 2008. The first Android smartphone was introduced. And uh, Windows 7 launched very soon thereafter. They were, of course, scrambling to, to get away from Vista. Windows 7 launched in October 22, 2009, about uh, two years and nine months after Vista came out. So they squeezed that development schedule to get uh, Windows 7 out and get everybody off their back. But it was still another version of the sort of traditional uh, combination software operating system designed to help you with content, uh, content creation and content consumption. Meantime, 
smartphones were taking off. Apple launched the iPad on April 3rd, 2010, about uh, maybe uh, six months after Windows 7 came out. Uh, Google scrambled along, came out with Google Nexus tablet in uh, July 13th, uh, 2012. So now you had Android tablets. And all at once, you had in your hand a device that mimicked computers in many ways. You could add, you had a keyboard on it, you could add a Bluetooth mouse to it, you could add a Bluetooth keyboard to it, you could use it uh, in lieu of a computer, you could, but mainly you could use tablets and you could use smartphones for all of this com content uh, consumption that you had been doing before. The sharing of information with friends, Facebook, uh, uh, downloading information, checking your emails, all of this consumption type thing that you used to have to do at home at your desktop or your laptop, you could do anywhere now with your smartphone or with your tablet. Uh, Google was scrambling to create this whole network of, of things, so was Apple. And the, the term that Woody Leonard used in a recent Windows uh, Secrets newsletter was everybody was creating a walled garden. That was the expression he used. The idea that within this walled garden now of Apple, you could do everything. You had, I, you had iMacs and you had, uh, uh, what's a portable? Uh, you know, the, the, you had the Apple computers to, for your content creation. You had iPads, you had smartphones to make it easy for the uh, consumption to take place anywhere. You didn't have to leave that walled garden of Apple. It was all within Apple. You could get music, you could get content, you could uh, everything. Google, in the meantime, was scrambling. They bought YouTube. Uh, they created uh, Android tablets, Android smartphones. Then they came along with Chromebook with the idea that they were going to put all your software in the cloud. You wouldn't need it on your computer anymore. It'd be like it was 20 years ago in big business where you had a mainframe down the hall and you had a terminal on your desk. Same idea, uh, except that there's no wires. It's all in the ether. Uh, in the meantime, there's Microsoft. We're still making operating systems for laptops and desktops. That was it. I mean, now, if you were Microsoft, you would think the train was leaving the station, I would think, about this time. And so Windows 8 came along, and somebody at Microsoft came up with the idea that said, hey, we've got to get on this bandwagon. We have got to create tablets. We have got to create smartphones. We've got to create our own walled garden that will give everybody what they need within the Microsoft world. And how will we do that? Well, we create a, a tablet a, a operating system and a smartphone operating system and we'll make it very, very similar. The interface is very, very similar and so forth. Uh, obviously, we can't abandon <coughs> folks who have been using the traditional Windows desktop format for all of their work but we want to kind of hook them into this tablet and, and, and smartphone thing because most of them already have an Android tablet or an iPad tablet or an Android smartphone or an Apple smartphone uh, already. So why would they switch now to a Microsoft version of that unless maybe we can kind of get them familiar with it in an operating system that they use on their desktop and laptop. And that's what they did. They created this family of, uh, of uh, software that runs basically the same on each of those platforms. I brought with me today uh, my laptop, of course, but I also brought with me a Windows 8 tablet. This is a Dell Venue 8 tablet. And this little tablet actually runs Windows 8.1, not Windows RT 8.1, which, which uh, you know, uh, a brain crack. Why they ever did that, I have no idea. But this runs Windows 8.1. And one of the, the key points about this is this uh, little beauty runs on an Intel Atom processor. It has two gigabytes of RAM. And it runs full Windows 
Now, if you remember when in the past, whenever Windows updated, you got a new Windows program, you had to go out and buy a new computer because each one required more and more horsepower to run. They've got this thing down to where it'll run on a tablet, very nicely, by the way, just as fast as my laptop. And what comes with this is a full version of Microsoft Office, student and, and home. Uh, that's not a trial version, a full version, which runs very nicely, thank you. I, I brought with you, with me, what you can do with this is you can plug a little dongle into it, right here. And this has a USB port. And so, for example, I can take this USB microphone, and I can go into Microsoft Word, open Microsoft Word. I can open Microsoft Voice Recognition, Windows Voice Recognition Program on this little beauty. And I can dictate and create a memo with this little laptop, or this little uh, tablet, with an Atom processor and two gigabytes of RAM. So they have got Windows 8.11 running very efficiently. And it works fine. You can, uh, you can, you can plug in memory. You can, I mean, you can, you can do anything you want to plug in here. Got Bluetooth built in, et cetera, et cetera. But more than that, the, the interface and, and the picture on the screen is identical to that. The, the way it works, identical to that. So they have got this to where you learn one, you can learn the other, and, and you get more and more comfortable with it. And of course, as we know, you can easily go from this to a desktop. You can set this up to boot to your desktop, et cetera. So, um, but you know, it, it, it was, I, I mentioned all this because people have found fault with Windows 8, 8, 8, 8 Windows 8, and Microsoft has come out with Windows 8.1, an upgrade, and, and an update to Windows 8.1, an update number one. And people are saying, yeah, but you didn't do this, and you didn't, and it's still sort of the same, and it is, it's still the same. And I don't expect this to change a whole lot. And oh, by the way, uh, from what I've read about rumors for uh, Windows 9, they, they're, they're expecting, there's talk that we'll see Windows 9 in the summer of 2015. Uh, but I can't fathom that it's going to be a whole lot different than this. They're going to have to have uh, a piece of the, now they could create two versions. They could create one version that would be like Windows 7, you know, with the old desktop just the way you had it. And they could create another version for people who want to use this for consumption and then like the touch screen and, and, and so forth and so on. But why? Why not give them both? And you choose. And oh, by the way, if you want to do the, the uh, consumption part, use the touch screen and so forth for your everyday stuff, fine. And if you want to sit down and write the great American novel with a keyboard and a mouse and, and, and Windows or Microsoft Word, do it in the desktop mode. So I don't know what's going to be in Windows 9, but I can't imagine them backing away from this because the whole idea is to have this across laptops, desktops, tablets, smartphones. So, uh, uh, Phil? Sir? Well, I heard in Windows 9 they're supposed to be bringing back the start button. Yeah. What would that do for you that you can't do here? Hey, I just know what I do. <laughs> no, but I mean, I've heard that before, and that's been a big complaint, and there's, there's add-on software that you can buy at a reasonable price that will recreate the start button as it exists in Windows 7. Right. But if you, uh, if you go to down here to the corner, don't be bashful, and you right-click here, you get a menu that has an awful lot of the things that used to be on the start button. So the question is, I guess it's what do you mean? I don't, I don't miss it. I mean, so I'm a, a little nonplussed about people who, who 
rant and rave about the start button in this there, because there you go. Uh, if, uh, if, you, if I wanted to open the program, for example, I could do it from my desktop. Uh, let me go to my desktop. I can do it from my taskbar. Let's uh, say I want to open Microsoft Word. Okay, here's Word. I can open it right there from my desktop if I want to. I can put icons on my desktop if I want to, shortcuts, and, and just like you, you did in Windows 7. But if I, uh, if I want to open Word from here, that's easy enough. I can put Word up here on uh, my application software, and there you go, and it takes me right to the desktop. So I, I, I don't know what the, the big issue is, but yes, ma'am. I had a problem I could not on my uh, the Windows 8 find the trash icon because I, I got rid of an, uh, an email that I, that I didn't want to get rid of. I accidentally, and I could not figure out how to get back. And I, I noticed when you did that right clicking on the start, I think the trash or whatever they call yeah. it came up. Yeah. Is that right? I mean, could I right click on my start and, and have that come up? Well, anybody, anybody click can click on that little, uh, uh, now. Is there a trash or whatever they call it? Recycle. Recycle, whatever. Uh, no, there isn't. Is there? No, I don't see it on here, but, uh, but let's, uh, let's go back here. Another, and this is one of the things when I told you about finding out things. Uh, this is, I'm running Windows 8.1 here, so you'll notice up in this corner, uh, there's a search uh, symbol, okay? So, uh, just click on that and type in, uh, so you have lost your recycle bin. Right. Okay. Right. What do you use that for? To get back this, that I accidentally got Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> Settings, 
And as you can see, uh, you've got search and apps. You've got uh, the main menu is all your PC settings. Talks about accounts, OneDrive, search, apps, privacy, network, time and language. It's worth exploring those and going through those because you may say, aha, you know, well, let me find out more about privacy. Uh, ease of access. Ease of access is really for people with disabilities. Update and recovery and so forth. Uh, and by the way, you can go also to the traditional control panel. Now, what I had done was uh, go to uh, PCs and devices. No, yes, no, where was I? Uh, I went to search and apps. There we go. And uh, it says use Bing to search online. So you need to set that on. In other words, turn this on or turn it off. Turn it on to do the search that I just did because Bing is, is Microsoft's search engine and it's tied in with that home screen. So with that turned on, you can now go back here and enter anything you want here. Okay? And you notice up here it says search everywhere. You can also say search settings, search files, search web images. So if you want to be more specific, like search only your own files, you can do that. Or you can search everywhere. Now, if you search everywhere, you'll get a search from the web as well as from your computer itself. I did a search on one thing, and I got about five or six Word documents that I had created on that particular subject, plus Microsoft stuff from the web, plus other people's stuff from the web. And, and so you get an answer, lots of answers to dig through. So you can narrow it down, or you can do a full search. But that's how I got to that answer about the, to your question. Thank you. Um, Bill, yours said <coughs> OneDrive and mine said SkyDrive. Yeah. I know they're supposedly the same thing. They are. Why did, is yours an older version or a newer version? Or why no. Did they when, when they first did Windows 8 uh, and Microsoft, every, you know, everybody's trying to get people to go in the cloud. This is back in this wall garden idea again, so you'll be in our, our little piece of the world. Uh, because Amazon's got their own cloud drive, Google has their own cloud drive, I'm sure Apple does. Uh, Microsoft started out with something they call SkyDrive. There's a company in Europe that already had the name trademarked. And somehow the guys at Microsoft missed that until one day they got this knock on the door saying, hey, you're using their name. So they changed the name to OneDrive. But same thing, it's their cloud Service. Would you talk about that for a minute? Okay. Let me make sure I, you be, before I move I'm sorry. Going to do that at the end? I'm no, sorry. no. I, I pretty much, I pretty much kind of gone through my big dissertation about what's happening with Windows 8 and what I think is going to happen with Windows 9. Yes, ma'am. Well, I mean, like, do you recommend it? What do you do with it? I, uh, I have an icon on my computer. The question was, what do you do with the OneDrive, how do you use it, and so on. The, the whole concept is that, uh, remember now, we're creating this family of products, so, uh, cell phones, smartphones, tablets, and computers. If you save your files to cloud storage, on, which is in the cloud, it's on somebody's server someplace, okay, you can access it anywhere. So you could access it from your, your cell phone. You could access it from your tablet. You can access it from your PC. You can access it from your friend's computer. If you're visiting your kids, you can use their computer and you can get your hands on this, which, of course, is getting back to Google with, with, trying with the Chromebook and everything's in the cloud, including the software. Uh, that's the theory behind it. Uh, they back this up. It's supposed to be, you know, with all sorts of security, uh, and uh, it, it makes it easy to share things with people. It, it makes it easy to collaborate with people. So, in a work environment, if you're trying to work on a report with other people, if you're in school and you're trying to do a, 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 a term paper or a lab experiment type write-up. Uh, other people can access this document and add to it, modify it. That's the idea. Now, there are some people who say, well, you know, I, um, uh, 
I'm uncomfortable putting personal information on somebody's server. I mean, if, if people can't protect my credit card information when I, when I go to the store, I don't want to put down my bank account information and my investments and my last will and testament and all these other personal things on somebody's server someplace with the promise that A, they're not going to look at it and use it for their own purposes, and B, that somebody's not going to hack in there and, and steal that information. And so, see that they're not going to go out of business. That's right. So uh, to spur you to do this, as you, uh, as you work with Windows 8, you migrate to Windows 8.1, Microsoft increasingly insists that you set up Microsoft accounts on your computer versus a local account like you used to have. And uh, when you do, they give you, as a little incentive, either it's five gigabytes or six gigabytes of, of free cloud storage on their OneDrive uh, server. Uh, but everybody else is doing the same thing. Amazon wants you to go on theirs, and, and you know Google wants you to go on theirs, and, and so forth. Uh, and then it gets into a question, okay, where do I want to store this stuff? Who, who do I trust to safeguard it? And so forth. Net result is I haven't put it, I put a te two test documents in Google Drive just to see how it worked. But other than that, I haven't used it. So you don't use cloud storage? No, ma'am. What do you use for storage? I use my computer and I use, and, and actually for this computer, which is my laptop, I store no, no personal information on here at all. If I'm working on personal information, I will put it on the thumb drive and take it out and, and transfer it to my laptop when, or my desktop when I get home. Because if somebody steals this, I don't want personal information going with it. And then I have a, a, a separate hard drive set up at home as backup uh, to back up my, my desktop. So that when they steal your desktop, they'll steal your portable drive as well. Yes. No, the only reason I ask is I just went to a lecture in Salt Lake City that talked about what Mike McHenry talks about, the one, two,
You need to no, think this don't. is a search window. This whole window is a search window. And, and, and what he asked me to type in was the word search, but what you actually can type in there is your search query, whatever, you know, that's really what you would do. So how do I find my recycle bin? You just type in how do I send it, just, mm -hmm. just type, and it will do exactly what you just saw. So it's a lot easier is what yeah. I'm saying. Yep. Uh, if you're typist, if yeah. you're used to mouse or touch, then Touch they, they did the same thing uh, uh, up here with the uh, power option. That was not part of the original Windows 8 screen either. You had to look around and, and know where it was and so on. So in response to complaints, they put it up there too. So if you want to turn off your computer, you can just click on that. That must be 811 because I have 81 and I don't have power. Okay. I think it is. Um, Oh, let me, speaking of 8.11, 8.1, the upgrade from 8 to 8.1 happened about a year ago. Uh, the update to 8.1 was released in April of this year. Uh, it was, uh, and, and I'll, I'll run through, the, there were about 12 things that they tweaked, and it wasn't a major stuff, but they, they tweaked about 12 things in Windows 8.1. But what I wanted to make sure everybody understood was that if you have Windows Update turned on on your computer, so automatically Windows updates for you, you don't have to do anything, then you will now be running Windows 8.1.1 have that update installed on your computer. But if you have Windows updates turned off because perhaps you've read articles in the past that said, hey, some of these updates screw up your computer and you know you want to take the if you have it turned off and you have not yet installed update number one for Windows 8.1, you are no longer getting updates from Microsoft. Okay? The cutoff was after June 10th of this year, they stopped sending updates to computers that had that were running 8.1 but had not yet installed update number one. So uh, double check, uh, you know, if you if you have automated automatic updates turned on in your control panel, shouldn't be a problem. You should be current up to date. But if you don't, Make sure that you either turn it on or that you go through, you do a Windows update, you go on Microsoft's website, you get a list of all the current updates, and you add update number one. Because otherwise, you're not going to get new security updates. Yes, sir. Well, that's interesting, because I haven't turned it on. I, I had no desire for it one because I've tried it once and screwed up my computer. Okay. Now, every time I turn on the computer uh, or have to reboot for whatever I get this uh, upgrade to 8.1. Right. And I usually say, not now, okay. type thing. And yeah. I want to either get rid of that or, or um, because I, I don't know, I've still been getting the updates for Windows. Yes, you are. Uh, they will still update, they will still support Windows 8. Yeah. Okay. This, But if you have upgraded to Windows 8.1, then you have to install this update to 8.1. If you don't want to install 8.1. Then you keep trucking along and you'll keep getting invitations to move to 8.1. Uh, that's what I'm asking. Is there any way to have that turn that on? Yeah. Probably not. Not that I'm aware of. There, there is a way to turn off updates. Oh, I want to turn off updates. But I don't know if that's in the list. Okay, Phil. Okay. Okay, well, say again how to make sure we're. Updating? Yes. How do I do step one, step two, step three? I, I'm sorry, say that again. You go into Microsoft to see if I have this installed. Oh. Uh, Thank you. 
typing system on the blank screen. Yeah, OK. Uh, good time. info, click on PC info, and it tells you what your computer has in it, and what it's running, memory, and it tells you what edition of Windows you have. Uh, in my case, it's Windows 8.1 Pro with Media Center. Most of you will just say Windows 8.1, because this is a Pro version. Uh, and that will tell you you have Windows 8.1. Now, if you have... Uh,
that gets back to uh, the search function that we've been talking about. Because if you type in uh, problems, if I could only type, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Problems installing. Uh, I was poking around for where do you go to get answers to questions and information and help and so forth and so on. And uh, one of the places I ran across is that I, what I entered here was windows.com. Windows.com. Yeah. And what it takes you to is a website that talks about uh, windows and it uh, gives you how-tos, uh, it gives you a description, it talks about downloads, you've got how-tos, how can we help you, it's got, uh, it's got uh, tutorials. Now okay. what does it say, website itself that you went to, or? Yeah, I, I, type, windows I typed in windows.com. Right. Now if you look closely uh, down here at the bottom, what actually pops up in address bar when you type in windows.com is windows.microsoft.com but they've got it set up so you don't have to type into Microsoft and what it does it gives you tutorials it gives you trending topics and, and so forth and so on uh, let me go back here uh, uh, but more than that let me scroll down through here uh, because they also have other Microsoft sites. Uh, Office, Windows Phone, Surface, Xbox, Bing, OneDrive, Outlook, Skype, and Microsoft Store. And you can go to any of those by typing in office.com or windowsphone.com or whatever, and you'll get a section devoted to tutorials and questions and so forth and so on. And as you browse through here, if you look under the searches, this is this is the page for Windows.com. Okay, and if you start browsing through here, they talk about Windows stores, they talk about Windows 8.1 update, they talk about tablets and PCs, and they talk about support, uh, contact support, browse support by category, by product. Uh, they offer um, uh, on. If you want to learn something about Windows 8, you can do exact, go back to that right. uh, start screen and type in what your question is. I want to learn more about whatever. Okay. okay. I got a program and you'll get, a, you'll, you'll get a bunch of, of websites to go to, some of which will be Microsoft websites, some will be commercial websites, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Microsoft has really, I think, tried hard to offer some support and information to people here. With their tutorials, uh, they've got uh, frequently asked questions you can go to. Uh, they've got a, a community, uh, you know, that you can go to, community forum.
forum post your, your question to the community. They've got their own experts that monitor those threads and will jump in with solutions. And so there's just just keep asking questions and you know and pulling on the string and you can get an awful lot of information. This was their solution. <laughs> I mean, you may get an answer you don't like, but you you know you'll get you'll find a place to get an answer. I know, I already did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, well. It's, uh, so the only way that it works as of now is yeah. to run it as a Windows XP System 3 right. program. Yeah. And it will run it with those eight. Yeah. There's no option on eight one for that. Not that same same thing. Thing. Well, try plugging in that same phrase. You the just problem use is with Windows 8.1. I ended up having I went into Windows. I ended up having to reform the reformat the whole computer and go back to eight. Yeah. Okay. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, let me while I'm on the subject of learning more about your computer, uh, let me. talk about uh, something in the Microsoft Store. Now, we've got a Microsoft Store with all sorts of apps in it, and you can plug in search terms in the store to find stuff as well. Um, website that offers uh, a whole bunch of tutorial videos on a whole range. It's a commercial website that if you go to the website itself at www.votaclick.com, V-O-D-E-K-C-L-I-C, Votaclick, V-O-D-E-C-L-I-C. They list about you know, probably a hundred different uh, sets of tutorials for different things. And this just gives you a, a sampling. They talk about Firefox training, uh, tips and, tri and tricks for Word 2013, Excel, uh, uh, Gmail, Google, you name it. And these are all free apps that you can get from the Microsoft Store and load onto your computer and, and use. Now, to be honest, I just discovered this last night, so I've not, I've not used any of these. So I can't tell you if they're good or not good, but for free, they're worth trying. Now, they also offer one for uh, Windows. Uh, and for example, they've got a tips and tricks for Windows 8.1, and it's free. Haven't used it? Gets four stars, or almost four stars. So probably worth uh, doing a shot. But they also have a series of 119 tutorials for Windows 8.1, which they will sell to you for $9, I think it's $9.99. A little bit pricey for some of the, the apps in the store, a lot of them are free. But if you want to try this one for free and see if you like it, then it might be something to consider if you want a tutorial that will take you through a whole bunch of, it's a whole bunch of videos that will take you through how do you do this, how do you do that, and, and so forth. So on. Uh, but you can do the same thing if you go back to uh, what I did before, what I had before, which was uh, uh, when I uh, went to I was uh, windows.com uh, uh, here we go windows 8.1 uh, what's new in windows 8.1 the new windows discover how to use it search everywhere uh, here's have your files take a tour new tablets and pcs here's the update uh, Read about the update, see what's changed, find out if you're running the latest version. Uh, and then there's, there's a cornucopia of information out there. Just keep plugging stuff in and, and pulling on the string and see what you like and what helps and what doesn't help. Yeah, I just don't like the fact that if it does not work, I don't want to have to reformat the computer all the I understand that. Well, that's why I would I would suggest posting the question to Microsoft. 
Microsoft or stopped at Microsoft store and said, hey, I, you know, am I doing something wrong here? Did I miss something? Maybe check out one of the forums and see if there's other people like yourself who are running uh, legacy programs and, and what did they do and how did it work? Lou just said, why don't you use a Cronus to make an image of your system and then just put it back on your system the way it was before? The image? Yes, I understand the question. Uh, because, uh, uh, because I don't have the problem, so that's why I wasn't doing that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. 
now because uh, I don't know. You get built-in commercial. I just uh, I when I came along I upgraded, so that was that was that. Well, Any other? Turn it off. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Let's take a vote and see who likes Windows Seven versus eight point one. <laughs> <laughs>
for it, and there you go. So for 80%, or 80%, 90% of, you know, if you're going on a vacation and you're not going to drive right to the Great American Highway while you're there, uh, you know, you could take uh, a keyboard with you, like I have here. I've got a, a Bluetooth keyboard, uh, Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, and my uh, tablet, and I'm good to go. Can you plug your hard drive into that? No. No? Let me read. Uh, I haven't tried. Uh, I don't know why you couldn't, though. You do a USB stick. Yeah, no, you, I don't know why you couldn't. Yeah, sure. It's, it's got a standard uh, 2.0 USB port, uh, and you just need a, 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 a dongle kind of thing that would take you from a mini to a standard and plug in anything. You can transfer files from your computer to this. Uh, so yeah, you should be able to plug in a hard drive. Yeah, 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 you can do it with USB stick. You should be able to do it with a hard drive. Yeah. Is, is that got Wi-Fi in? Yes. Okay, I've got all my external drives are on the network. Oh well, that's another so option. But but yeah, if you had a little port, you know, like a little portable Western Digital drive or whatever, uh, it's got its own power supply. So or it doesn't. That that could be that could be yeah that could be a problem because. because this, this will power, uh, let's see, what have I tried to USB power? would be no problem with power yeah. hard drive. This will, I mean, I can plug in my microphone, which has a little light on it, you know, turn on and yeah. off, and the light turns on, but that's not a big current draw. The current could be an issue because you'd be drawing all of the, the power out of this battery. Could you plug in the, the uh, tablet? I'm sorry? If you plugged in the tablet, so it's so getting power. I don't know. I, I remember years ago, we were going on a long vacation and I wanted to be able to have all my documents and I didn't want to carry around a big laptop, so I bought a netbook and I had a little Western Digital Drive. Sure enough, somebody asked me uh, somewhere in the Canadian Rockies about some information. I said, well, if you can wait till tonight, I'll get it off my hard drive and I'll email it to you, and that's just what I did. Yeah. But I had the, I think I had the netbook plugged in. Yeah. Like on my TV, I can plug my hard drive into my TV. Right. If it's a solid state drive or it says hybrid, you don't need a power supply. You just plug it right in and yeah. play all your files right off of it. So that might work on, on one of those laptops. I would think it would because flash drive, flash drive will. So, yeah. so you're saying you plug it into your TV rather than the tablet? Well, if, I, if I'm going to watch a movie off my uh, hard drive, yeah. I plug it into my TV and I play the movie there. Oh, well, we have a dumb TV, not unlike its owners. Yeah, you got to have a new TV with a USB. Mine has a USB 3 connection on it. You had a device also, uh, a thing that was up there that looked like Vodafone Boda, home, home yeah. or something. What's that called? It's... Boda... You know, click. It's a website. You can go to www.votaclick.com and see all of their offerings, mm -hmm. or you can go to Microsoft Store and see some of their offerings. Um, I just upgraded my Windows 8.1, and I still don't have the power up. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, the, uh, interestingly enough, I don't have them on my uh, tablet either, and when I poked around on uh, the description, let me, matter of fact, let me give you the, uh, there's, you can go into Windows Help, uh, this was uh, windowsmicrosoft.com, uh, there, there's a, an article in there, what's new on Windows 8.1 update, so the update that came out in April, and it takes you through uh, it's about uh, three pages with screens and so forth and so on, and it takes you through what's different and what changed uh, with the update. And one of the things was that power and search buttons on the start screen. So Fred was talking about that little magnifying glass on the start screen. Right next to it's the power button that, uh, that Robin was just asking about. 
These buttons appear in the upper right hand corner of the start screen next to your account picture. You'll be able to quickly and easily shut down your PC or search from, for things right from the start. But of course, as Fred pointed out, you don't even need the magnifying glass, just type in your search term. Some types of PCs don't have the power button on start. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's right. Would it be related to the size? I have no idea. But it doesn't show up on my tablet either. But you the magnifying have... glass does, but the start button does. It's so easy because it's a touch screen, you just go like that. And JJ reminded me of this, and then you do all the pull yeah. So there's a lot of ways to turn it off. So, Apparently, for whatever reason, some of the changes they put into update number one don't all show up on every computer. It's getting kind of late, so I don't want to keep you too long. I'll stick around for a while and you know, answer any questions I can. But the point that I want to get across out of all of this is, number one, I, th I think we have a train running down the track here that we are going to see a dual operating system for Microsoft for all the reasons I talked about because they're trying to compete with Apple and Google and, and so forth and so on. And secondly, uh, there's a lot of ways to get information or get your questions answered. Use search terms here, go to windows.com, go to Windows Store, uh, just keep plugging in those uh, search queries until you get the answers you're looking for. You know, I'm on this photo click and uh, you have a free trial. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, for 48 yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not long, okay. but yes. Yeah. But, you know, like I say, I've had questions over the years and I just go and, and, and on the top in the search and I yep. just, just type in yep. uh, questions and I get a whole bunch of, you know, th uh, items and I click on what I think it might be and I get a lot of answers that way. That's what I try to do with this eight. Yeah. And I got in, I got rid of that, but um, I'm stuck now. So it's <laughs> well, 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 I get answers. The problem is I don't understand them. Well, yes. Thanks a lot, Phil. You're welcome. Thank and you. Very and very well. Well. Uh, and this, so you know, the future of Windows is going to include this, what used to be called the Metro screen, and it's going to include the desktop for a long time. The, the desktop screens aren't going to go away. You can get, still get to the DOS prompt from back when you had DOS running on a black screen with text. You can still get to that. So they're going to keep the desktop screen around for a long time. So don't worry that you're going to lose that. And that's what I wanted to say. Thanks a lot, Phil. Okay. I have a question. How did you make